everybody out there, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about inflammation, what it is, what causes it, and also 12 foods to eat to help to reduce inflammation in the body. So let's get into it. There's a bug, there's a bug, there's a bug, ah. Let's, uh, let's do this. So inflammation, very, very generally speaking, is your body's immune response to some sort of irritant. So this irritant could be anything from a foreign object, like a, you know you cut your finger, you, there's a splinter, or something like that. Um, could also be caused by things like viruses or bacteria, or you're getting some sort of infection can cause inflammation. Even exercise, especially high intensity exercise, can cause inflammation in the body. And when you think of inflammation, you want to think of things like swelling and soreness and redness and sometimes even heat. But there's also some diet and lifestyle factors as well that can contribute to the development of inflammation in the body. So things like excessive alcohol intake, excessive uh, refined carbohydrate intake, high intake of red meat, um, stress, a sedentary lifestyle, trans fats from ultra processed food. So all of these things can contribute to inflammation in the body uh, or exacerbate an existing inflammatory condition. But what I want you to know is that inflammation is actually very important in a lot of cases. We actually need that inflammatory response to exist for different reasons. It actually helps us to fight off illness and uh, to heal wounds. So not all inflammation is bad however we certainly can have too much chronic kind of you know systemic inflammation is related to a whole host of issues cardiovascular diseases so things like heart disease certain cancers metabolic diseases and really any a condition that ends in itis, I-T-I-S, so things like arthritis, dermatitis, gastritis, these all involve inflammation. So with all that being said, let's explore 12 anti-inflammatory foods to eat more of. But remember that while these are of course wonderful for our body and wonderful to be consuming regularly, there's no need to stress over these foods or to become obsessive about eating only anti-inflammatory foods at all times. There's, there's no need for that at all. So let's get into it. So food number one are berries, like strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, you name it. These contain what are known as anthocyanins, which is a certain kind of antioxidant that actually gives berries their ruby red and blue colors, gives them their, their vibrant colors. And these compounds have anti-inflammatory effects that can help to reduce your risk of different kinds of diseases. So I love berries in all kinds of different ways. Having just a fresh handful of berries is great. I always have a bag of frozen berries in my freezer because I love adding them to uh, smoothies in the morning. It's a great way to use berries. I also love making chia jam. Um, I have a whole recipe over my blog on how you can make chia jam with some berries over on my blog. I'll leave it linked below. Number two is broccoli and really just cruciferous vegetables in general. So cruciferous veggies like cauliflower and kale and bok choy and cabbage, Brussels sprouts, these kinds of vegetables contain sulforaphane, which is so fascinating, this compound. It has anti-cancer properties. It's also, of course, has anti-inflammatory properties as well. But what I want to say here is that Broccoli sprouts, which are the little sprouts from the seeds of broccoli, um, contain even more sulforaphane than a regular just head of mature broccoli. So I have instructions on how you can make broccoli sprouts at home over on my blog. I will leave that linked below, um, but they're wonderful to add to on top of salads and a sandwich. You can even toss them in your smoothie. Broccoli sprouts are great. They contain a much more potent source of this sulforaphane. So some ways that I enjoy eating cruciferous vegetables though in general, I love adding broccoli to stir fries. Uh, I eat quite a lot of kale, add that to smoothies. Sometimes I'll even add it to soups. I also love making a carrot cabbage, um, kind of like a slaw, it's like a coleslaw. So I love that recipe. I will leave links to some of my favorite cruciferous related recipes. Uh, 
uh, below in the description box. Number three are leafy greens, dark leafy greens. So I am talking here things like spinach, uh, collard greens, Swiss chard, arugula, um, also kale as well, which we just talked about. Dark leafy greens are so rich in not only fiber and B vitamins, but also antioxidants, which we know are very important for the protection of our cells and for often having anti-inflammatory effects, but um, also minerals. Dark leafy greens are really rich in minerals like calcium and magnesium, and magnesium in particular is quite good for keeping inflammation at bay in the body. It's one of the reasons why you wanna make sure that you're getting plenty of minerals in your diet, and dark leafy greens can help you do that. I always have either a container of some sort of spring mix in my fridge. I often like to have baby spinach or baby kale. I love using leafy greens for salads, but often I will put a big handful into a smoothie, so easy to do. You can also use leafy greens uh, in stir fries. Sauteing them up is super easy, adding them even to soups, add them into pasta sauce. Honestly, add a handful of greens to pretty much anything and you're good to go. Number four are whole grains. So there are some studies that have shown that whole grains can help to reduce inflammation in the body. And the key here though is whole grains. Whole grains have the endosperm, the germ, and the bran all intact. When a grain has been refined, the bran and the germ have been stripped away, which removes a lot of the fiber and a lot of the nutrients from the grain. So when you think of whole grains, what I'm talking about here are things like whole grain brown rice, um, oats, millet, buckwheat, whole grain spelt. Whole grains are also wonderfully, wonderfully beneficial for our microbiome. So the, the community of beneficial bacteria and various microbes that reside in our colon. Um, whole grains contain specific kinds of fibers that help to nourish our microbiome, which can in turn help to reduce inflammation as well when we have a healthy, thriving uh, microbiome. There's so many different ways you can use grains as a side dish with dinner. You can have it as a base with a salad. Um, and of course, yeah, oatmeal, porridges, things like this are great too. Overnight oats, wonderful. Food number five are seeds. Seeds are tiny but powerful little powerhouses of nutrition. Um, and specifically, some seeds that I'm talking about here are things like flax seeds, hemp seeds, and chia seeds, which contain omega-3 fatty acids, which are really important for helping to uh, reduce inflammation in the body. Omega-3s have been shown to benefit joint health, cholesterol levels, inflammation, um, heart health as well. And there's so many different ways for us to enjoy seeds. You can sprinkle them on salads, add them to your smoothies. I always put at least one or two of these kinds of seeds in, in my smoothies, usually always hemp seeds. Often I'll have chia seeds. Um, like I mentioned, I have a chia jam recipe that I love over on my blog, so you can make that as well. Number six are fatty fish. So fatty fish are another great source of those omega-3 fatty acids. And if you are uh, concerned about mercury, mercury, I can't say mercury. <laughs> mercury levels, um, then opt for a smaller fish as opposed to large ocean predator fish. So some safer fish tends to be things like salmon, mackerel, sardines, anchovies, anchovies, <laughs> that's plural there, um, arctic char, what else, haddock. Fish oil supplements can also be an option too. Maybe if you don't love cooking or you don't tend to cook a lot of fish in your home, um, you can also do a fish oil supplement. I like the omega-3 supplement by uh, Nutrisee. Uh, but you could also, if you're wanting to look for a more plant-based option, you could do an algae-based DHA, EPA uh, supplement or omega-3 supplement. I really like cooking salmon in the oven, I will bake it with lemon, dill, salt and pepper. I also have a couple of different glazes that I like to use, sometimes like a maple mustard glaze or I'll do like a soy kind of ginger sesame sauce is really good as well. Food number seven is extra virgin olive oil. So maybe you didn't know this, but extra virgin olive oil contains an antioxidant called oleocanthal, at least I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, that has some pretty powerful anti-inflammatory effects. And what I will say here though, 
is that the key is extra virgin olive oil. Also always recommend that you buy your oils in dark glass amber bottles as opposed to clear plastic just because of those delicate properties of the oil are sensitive to light and things like that. So you can use olive oil for cooking. Certainly I do use it for sauteing up veggies and things like that. Um, you just want to make sure that you don't let it the, let the heat get too high or that you let the oil start smoking or burning. You definitely want to avoid that, but certainly use olive oil uncooked, just raw by drizzling it over soups or on salads or making salad dressings with it as well is a great way to use it. Number eight is avocado. I love avocado. I eat it at least a couple of times a week, once or twice a week, I always like to have some avocados in my kitchen. But avocados are rich in heart healthy monounsaturated fats, as well as B vitamins and potassium. And they also contain a really specific compound that has been shown to help to reduce inflammation in the body as well. So it does have some anti inflammatory effects. Avocado can be added to smoothies to help to thicken them, make them creamy. Um, you can dice them up. And enjoy them on a salad or with like tacos or fajitas. Avocado is really great for that. Guacamole, of course. Love me some guacamole. Number nine are tomatoes. The humble tomato. The humble tomato. Tomatoes are uh, wonderful because they are really rich in two fascinating antioxidants. One being vitamin C really, really potent antioxidant, as well as lycopene, it's another one. And these are really great for helping to reduce inflammation in the body uh, in, in particular, really, really good for that. And what's kind of fun to know here, maybe you, you didn't know this, little fun fact is that uh, lycopene, that antioxidant, it's actually enhanced when tomatoes are cooked. So enjoy your pasta, enjoy your spaghetti and, and your, your tomato sauces. Food number 10 is ginger. I love ginger. It's very zesty, uh, kind of has a zingy spice to it. And one of the most kind of active uh, bioactive compounds found in ginger is known as gingerol, which is sort of responsible for its medicinal properties, including its anti-inflammatory properties. But ginger is also good for supporting digestion. So it can be good if you have an upset stomach, if you're nauseous, uh, in some cases can also be useful for constipation as well. And here's my favorite way to use ginger. I love to take a fresh knob of ginger, take a little piece of it, uh, remove the skin and add that to a smoothie. Stir fries, add some freshly minced ginger to um, hot water with lemon is really good if you're just wanting like a nice soothing drink. Number 11 is green tea. I love green tea so much and many of the benefits of green tea can be attributed to a very potent antioxidant. You've heard me say that word so many times in this video and anti-inflammatory compound known as epigallocatechin gallate. So E G C G. I love to just have like a hot cup of just plain green tea. Sometimes I will do decaf because too much caffeine can be a little bit much for me, but um, just plain green tea. But I also love matcha. Matcha is so good. Some matcha powder. Many of you know that I, I love my matcha. I like to do matcha lattes. And it also actually, matcha in particular, contains a, um, an, an amino acid called L theanine that has some kind of calming anti stress effects. So it can help to offset some of that caffeine content. Alrighty, and lastly, food number 12 is turmeric. So um, I have to say, I don't eat a ton of turmeric personally, only because I don't love the taste of turmeric. So when I do use it, I usually will just use a small amount. Actually, I have a smoothie recipe on my blog that is really, really delicious that has some turmeric in it, and I highly recommend you give it a try. It's got carrot and orange. It's really good. I'll leave that link below, and ginger as well. Um, but turmeric uh, contains a specific compound known as curcumin that is responsible for giving turmeric its bright orange color, but it's also what gives it its anti-inflammatory effects. So turmeric is known for being quite anti-inflammatory. So turmeric can be used in many different ways. Like I said, I have a smoothie recipe that I like to add it to, um, different curries and stir fries. You could also use turmeric in. So that brings us to the end of today's video. To read through everything that I talked about today and all of these foods, I do have a whole blog post up, so you can find that linked 
uh, down below as well as various recipes that I talked about you can find in the description box below as well. Let me know in the comments if you yourself enjoy some of these foods and um, I will see you all in the next one.